Hi, this is Vivian Vanderveld. Welcome to Chapter 10 of Allison Who Went Away. This book was written and published in 2001. So if you're wondering why the kids don't have cell phones and why some of their references seem out of date, that's why. Chapter 10. It comes, in comes a sort of young looking guy wearing jeans and a short sleeved black shirt with a priest scholar. He leaps onto the stage while we're all shifting forward and he smiles wide enough to show his molars. He doesn't need a microphone. I'm Father Kevin Romero, he says. You can call me Father Romero, or you can call me Father Kevin, or you can even call me Father Kev, but please don't call me late for dinner. It's a variation on a joke so old that even Wally has stopped saying it. Connie and I settle down behind a 17-year-old midget who's slouched in his seat with a glove balanced on his head, fingers pointing upward. He turns very, very slowly so as not to tip the glove, and he makes no effort to hide the fact that he's looking us over. Lincoln, he asks. Mother of sorrows, Connie answers. Ha, the kid says. Mossy girls like he's the first person in the world to notice that the initials of Mother of Sorrow's School spells out M-O-S-S. -S. A rolling stone gathers no moss, the kid practically shrieks. We graduated from grammar school for this, Connie whispers to me in a very loud whisper. Before I can answer, Father Kevin says, Now! The noise level goes down a few decibels, and they acrobatically inclined kid turn, kid turns back around, gloves still in place. Father Kevin continues, I think the best thing to do is to get into this right away. So before we get down to assigning specific roles, let's work on one of the chorus numbers that the whole group will be doing. Here's the sheet music. Okay, everybody up. Connie and I share a distressed look. Obviously, we've wandered into the wrong section. Desperation makes me bold. Um, excuse me, I say, but the piano is already playing. The girl next to me passes me a stack of sheet music, which I pass on to Connie without taking one. Connie hesitates and takes one before, before passing the rest on. Come on, everyone, Father Kevin shouts. On your feet, settle in, listen. Your turn is coming next. He's got one of these super enthusiastic voices that makes me want to bite him. Connie kicks me because I'm the only one still sitting. I get up, but I stand with my hands in my pockets, hating Connie already. The official piano player is a smirky blonde kid with no eyebrows. I'm sorry, with no eyelashes. He sings a verse, and Father Kevin says, Now, everybody, share if there's not enough sheet music. Next to me, Connie picks up the song quickly, and she has a decent voice. I move my lips so Father Kevin won't yell at me. But what does a stagehand need to know the song for? The whole group plows through the song once, everybody's singing melody. Then Father Kevin begins to divide us up. Baritones, tenors, altos, sopranos... I wave my hand in the air, but he ignores me until Connie finally tugs my arm down. You're going to look like a second grader to Matt, she warns me. Just wait until Father Kevin gets to us. It seems like a dumb plan to me. I'm just hoping that whatever the stage crew is, wherever the stage crew is meeting, we won't arrive too late. Finally, Father Kevin gets to our row. Alto or soprano, he asks me. Matt Burke is standing next to him with a clipboard, writing down our names and what part we're singing. Stage crew, I tell them. Yes, yes, I know, Father Kevin says. I guess I just look like stage crew, he continues. But I want everybody in the spirit of this just to give you a feel for what we're doing. Yes, but he puts his arm around my shoulders. shoulder. We're all one family here, cast and crew. I want everybody to be happy. I'd be happy if he wasn't making a spectacle of me. Alto or soprano, he asks again. I, how should I know? I don't sing. What difference does it make if I don't sing in alto or if I don't sing in soprano? In music class, Mrs. McNeely recognizes this. She knows I have just two notes, one high note and one low note. On a really good day, I can squeeze a middle note between the other two. 
Mrs. McNeely is happy if I keep the words coming out at the same rate as the other girls. Scales, please, Father Kevin says to the pianist, who smirks even more broadly than usual. The rotten kid with the glove, he's finally removed from his head, is facing backwards, gaping at me. I'm not even looking to see Matt's reaction to all this. I've seen him cross his eyes at some of the other kids' attempts. Ah, the pianist sings. Ah, I throw a dirty look at Connie, who's beaming. She's always like being the center of attention, but I figure the only way to get everybody to stop looking at me, including Matt Burke, is to sing the stupid scales. I hit two or three. I, I hit two of my three notes, and Father Kevin says, "Fine, alto," and he turns his attention to Connie. No need to be nervous, Matt tells me. You have a really sweet voice. I get so flustered that I almost give my name as Susan instead of Sybil. Connie, of course, is a soprano. All the girls who can sing are sopranos. This is stupid, I tell myself, as we sing in our four-part harmony, and I wonder how many of the others are singing only tonight. What good does it do for us to learn this idiotic song when all we're going to be doing is painting scenery and moving sets around? But on the other hand, Matt did call my voice sweet. Good would have been a blatant lie, and I would have felt worse because he was obviously trying to make me feel better. But sweet? I suppose it's a possibility. It keeps me going until 9.30 when we break up for the night, and Mrs. Moraglia drives me and Connie home. I hope you're enjoying. Allison, who went away. Meanwhile, stay safe and be kind.